Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Summit. And today we're back in the labs. Right, we're in an outdoor lab today. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in Vermont. What's right. the temperature? I think it's like... 66, 69, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's good for hanging out and doing experiments, but it's not good for our road, as you can see. So hopefully it's going to survive and we'll be able to get out of here in a few weeks. Right. But today's episode is going to be about our wheel chocks. We are going to be doing something a little bit different and doing some outdoor tests with these. Yeah. Normally I'm not swayed by internet hysteria. You know, we don't switch out our tires every three to five years. Right. We don't lift our Airstream to get into a gas station either. And somehow we have cheated death for 20 years by towing an F-150. Mm -hmm. But when one of these broke, I was pulling it out and I broke it with my superhuman strength. Right. I figured I'd buy some new ones. And when I did so, I kept hearing a lot of people say, you know, hey, don't get the cheap yellow ones get the heavy duty one. So I went out and that's what I did. Right. I think you went overboard with that one. What store did you get those from? Yeah, we got these from Sporty's Pilot Shop. And just after this, we'll go ahead and get the full dimensions and specifications of these. But and wait, because I think they're very heavy, aren't they? They are heavy. So, um, yeah, and these are designed for light jet aircraft, like Cessna Citations, Learjets, stuff like that. So uh, it's basically what you'd see at your airport. Right. So let's go ahead. Let's get the specifications on these, and then let's get out to our test site. These yellow plastic chocks are a very popular choice amongst RVers. They feature hard plastic with a curved groove surface. They are 4.25 inches tall, 8 inches in length, and 4.75 inches wide. These chocks are extremely popular around our nation's airfields. The main difference from these chocks is that they're a heavy rubber material and they're much wider than the yellow chocks. They measure 4.5 inches tall, by 10 inches wide, by five inches long. Here's the summary information, and you can see that the major differences are the weight and the cost. One other dimension that I think is important is that the surface contact area is greater with the black pad, and that may come into play in the future. Okay, so what's the first step before we get inside of any science experiment? We have to come up with a null hypothesis. Okay, and what's our null hypothesis in this experiment? We are thinking that there's no difference between these two products. Right, so our null hypothesis is there is no difference between these two sets of wheel chocks. Right. Let's go ahead and do the testing. So where are we off to? We are off to our park where we've got a nice little steep hill where we can actually test these wheel chocks out. You can see how steep this hill is. Yep. And it's what, an 8% grade? That's what we saw. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this and put our wheel chocks to the test. Alrighty, sounds like good times. We'll start this test by marking exactly the center so that we can put the truck in the same position each and every time. So let's go ahead and put the chalk there. I'll go in, we'll dump it into neutral, see what happens. All right. Ready? That was an epic fail. <laughs> what do you think? I don't think that test was entirely successful. No. <laughs> mm. All right, let's try the other one. I hope you have more yellow things. That was sacrificed in the name of science. Hey, I bet the same thing happened to Tesla and everybody else. Well, pretty sure that this one's not going to at least smush. No. So we're going to give this one a shot. Hopefully with some better results. I'm slipping and sliding here. It's a little, you can see. A Get a good silly. angle. All right. Give it a shot. It's rolling, but it's not letting go. How interesting. That, I would say, is a success. 
There you have it. It held. Okay. I'm going to put your parking brake on now. <laughs> well, you have that result versus that result. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> but of course, it's love subbing, so we're prepared. We get another one. We're going to go ahead and repeat this on a slightly less incline. All right. And I think we're going to pick up our mess. Yes, I think that would be the polite thing to do. So that's uh, one null hypothesis shattered. I would say we have to reject that null hypothesis. Alrighty, so we're off to a less severe slope. Yes. On this glorious 69 degree day. All right, so we've arrived at our second test location, and this location is at four degrees down bubble, as you can see right here. So we're gonna go take our other chop. Not quite as a severe slope. We're gonna go ahead and place it under in a similar test fashion. How are you gonna mark the uh, beginning to do the stick? That stick will mark. Yep. And we'll go ahead and repeat the procedure. Hopefully with better results. We've already sacrificed one to science. Ready? Yep. Whoa. It crept up on it a little bit, but it's not completely shattering it. All right, I think that's a reasonable test. All, All right, right. Well, how did we it, do? It, it crept up on it, but it didn't shatter it. All right, we'll repeat it just to make sure. I anticipate fully that we'll be able to accept our null hypothesis with this one. But it did creep up on it. It was interesting. Okay, this is the one thing. There's, there's very little I dislike about this truck, but there's one thing I do dislike about it, and that is it always locks all the trunk door. So... When, when you do what? When you start the truck? Yeah, when you drive. Okay. At 13 miles an hour, it locks everything, and then it stays locked. So I gotta go unlock the truck. All right. Well, at least that was a better result than that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be interested to see if this one creeps up as well, or if it just stays put. Ready? Yep. Wow, that hardly moved at all. Again, it doesn't have the slopey thing that it has on the yellow one, on this one, so it just didn't creep up at all. Interesting. So it didn't creep up at all, really, because okay. I'm, I'm making the assumptions because it doesn't have that little slopey thing, because uh, the plastic one has a steeper slope so that yep. the tire can creep up on it. Yep. This one, it just basically stayed there. All right. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Assess our results. Figure out our conclusions. All right. Well, there you have it. Science with wheel chocks. Exactly. So what do you think? Well... I'm going to think we're going to have to reject our null hypothesis, at least in one of these instances, correct? Yeah, I think there was a definite difference um, with <laughs> these wheel chocks. You think? And these guys performed better, um, not just from a smashing standpoint, but it started scooting it backwards. Right. This, at least the rubber with this one held it in place a little bit more easily than the plastic. Yep, exactly. How about when we went on a reduced slope? I think they sort of work the same, but at least with the yellow one, the tire did creep up onto it, yep. and I think might have been the slope of the of the wheel chalk versus anything else. Yeah, the, the shape of these versus that slope curve right. allowed the wheel to come up on them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, that to me is a slight difference, but it's one that I wouldn't want. I liked how these things were pretty stable. Right, I think so. So in the end, I think we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and in this case, internet hysteria worked for us. Right, I These things so. are indeed better. Right. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click the subscribe. And comment below whether you have the yellow wheel chocks, something like this, or something different. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one 
every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.